Garth Jennings, uh, the movie Sing is your first foray into directing an animated feature. Uh, talk about making the, the leap into that. The leap, yeah, it's actually a leap. It's, mass it's a massive gap <laughs> between live action and animation, I, I found anyway. Uh, the whole process is totally different. But um, I didn't really know that when I started. Um, and I, I suppose that naivety is quite useful. It meant that I didn't think too much about that. But uh, yeah, the main thing is that you're, A, it's been five years since I started talking to Chris Melodandry about this idea. So it's a very long um, process. But also, uh, it, it moves much more like a pipeline, like a production line. So you've got to keep feeding the 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 the, the machine. You know, do you know what I mean? Uh, you've got one department waiting for the next thing, and then another part department waiting for their bit, and you've got to finish yours. So it goes. It, it all that's slightly that's all new to me. But once you work out how it works, it's great. It's thrilling when you see all the pieces fall into place, and then you have a perfect shot or a perfect moment or sequence. It's really amazing. It's just a long, spread out thing. Instead of like a shoot where you're getting everything, 99% of what you need is in front of the camera. This is all like one thing here, and then maybe you'll get the next line six months later. And yeah, it can, it can be very, very spread out. So you've got to stay on your toes. Well, tell us where the idea for this movie came from and why, well, obviously it's about a bunch of talking animals, so uh, <laughs> it's best to do it in animation anyway, but yeah. uh, why do it with talking animals and, and why do it as an animated feature? Well, first to your, your question, where did this come from? It came from Chris Melodandry. Oh, okay. He had seen a film of mine called Son of Rambo and he thought that he liked it and he thought maybe there would be a common ground we could find as far as making a film together. And he came to London a few, five years ago and suggested an idea that was about animals in some kind of singing competition, something along those lines. And we both love those kind of movies like The Commitments that are, you know, music, films that, that have music in them as opposed to characters that burst into song. Not that I'm against that, I have love that stuff. But it was that kind of story that we thought we could do with an idea like this. And it just got really exciting. It became those, that premise became very, it was just the idea of seeing characters go through a life-changing experience with music. That was it. Like, literally within 45 minutes, I was sort of hooked. I'm here now because of that cup of tea. Right. Well, you've done uh, quite a few music videos as well. Uh, so, yeah. I, I mean, music is obviously a big um, an important part of your work. Um, yes. So, uh, now take us through the process. You co-directed this film with a man, and I'm going to butcher his name, um, <laughs> Christophe uh, Luderlet, uh, is that his name? Yeah, but the thing with, with co-directing, a co-director, it's very, what this is one of the many, many differences with animation and live action. See, um, in live action, you would have an assistant director who's like a, who's there to, yeah. and, and in animation, that role is called a co-director, but it's an right. assistant role. Um, sometimes two, you get two directors on a movie. Um, sometimes you get three in, in, in a, in animation. But in this case, I was the only director and writer on the film. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, take us through the process of directing an animated film then. Well, uh, it's, it's a hard one to pin down because it's, it's so, um, it, because I'm writing it as well, your day, my days are chopped up into chunks. Um, and as you get nearer and nearer the end of the pro project, those chunks become like 15 minute uh, little uh, episodes where you'll be in one room with one person and, and you just be running around, seeing all the different departments and keeping it all on track as it's all coming in. As you can imagine, by the time you get to the end, you're getting loads of stuff every hour. Um, and so, but to start with, it was mainly writing and and you're you're creating a, um, a a story reel version of the film, so it's all like a moving storyboard, and you're using uh, you know people from the office as voices. Myself, in fact, that's and, and one of the I was doing a lot of the voices myself at that stage, so I ended up being Miss Crawley because of that because it just worked. That was one of the voices I was doing, and it worked. But um, but then uh, yeah, you just you are just running around like a crazy person. It's a marathon at sprint speed, and it's. Uh, constantly pulling the movie apart and testing it and trying to improve it and then before you get into recording the actors and you know animating the thing which becomes much more of a big deal then to make changes yeah well how did your experience as a live action director of 
uh, films like Son of Rambo and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and uh, music videos. How did that help you uh, in doing this? Uh, I suppose I'm just used to working with lots of people. Mm -hmm. That's the, I know that sounds like a really boring start to the answer. <laughs> but I mean, you've got like between three, three or 400 people over the course of a few years working on this. And I'm used to uh, being in the middle of these things. And I love that. I love that working with a team to make something happen uh, on screen. But then, um, but then also, you know, when you've shot as many music videos as we did, you kind of get a, you've got a good idea of how it should, how to shoot things like the whole thing is, a, you know, towards the end is a big music set piece. And it felt very comfortable. And you know exactly where the camera should be, exactly how the character should move, all that stuff. It was, um, it felt like actually inadvertently, I've learned how to do that through music videos. Yeah. Right. Let's talk a little bit about working with the voice cast. As you said, you are a voice in it, so you've got some experience in that. Um, but it, it's a great cast, we like Matthew McConaughey, Reese Witherspoon, John C. Riley, Scarlett Johansson, just to name a few. Uh, what made them right for the roles? And then talk a little bit about getting the best performances out of them. Yeah, well, the, there's all kinds of reasons that, for each individual as to why they were right. There's not like one thing. That, like, for instance, Matthew, Matthew's role of playing Buster Moon, that Buster Moon has to be, he's this huge enthusiast. He's a, a bucket loads of optimism, but he's also very endearing with that. He, he kind of treads a fine line between slightly dubious, slightly bending of the truth, but at the same time, you can see why he's doing it. There are like lots of little white lies in Buster's life. So, um, and that, that optimism and, and energy had to be infectious and not irritating. Like that, you know, the last thing you want is some obnoxious <laughs> character just drove. And, the, and one of the many, many lovely things about Matthew is that he has a warmth to him and an energy that is just, I don't know, irresistible for me personally. And, um, and then for casting the other characters, it really totally depended on what they were. Obviously, with people like Scarlett, with Reese, uh, Taryn, um, they all had to be able to so we knew that they could perform you know acting wise they had to be able to sing the songs that we wanted to sing for them uh, put in for them so yeah that was there were all kinds of reasons and it's amazing to get your first choices I've never had that before well or no I've had it before but never on everyone you know um, it's normally like somebody's normally not available or or you know they're not sure and no it was just everyone jumped in and has been incredibly enthusiastic till right up till you know, we've got the premiere on Saturday and everyone's coming along and it's all, here we go, yeah. Well, it's such a wide and, and uh, varied group of characters, of animals and singers, and you've got to juggle all of them, especially in the very beginning of the movie. You're, you're introducing all these different characters. Was it a challenge to juggle all those different uh, yeah. arcs? Yeah, I mean, making a film with six stories, <laughs> uh, is is insanity really isn't it don't try that at home um but it was one of those things that right from the beginning was most appealing about the idea that you would be with these characters through the movie so by the time you get to the end you are really rooting for them you know what it means to them to make this performance work um but the challenge really was in mainly in the writing stages that was the hardest part of it as you're going forwards the editor Greg would find beautiful ways of making this a very sort of musical edit. It was it really he would hand off and send you to the next scene just in, a, in the most perfect way. The timing was great, but most of the you know real head scratching stuff was done in the writing. Yeah. Speaking of the writing, I mean you've got to establish this world in which uh, animals are uh, like people and uh, they yeah. can. Uh, predators and prey interact with each other and uh, perform real-world duties. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about creating that world, not just in the writing phase, but also in the design phase. Yeah, well, well first of all, creating that world was, uh, I just thought I wasn't going to spend a single second uh, making a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I literally, you just, you just, I'm just going to tell, shoot it like it's a movie and as if they're just regular folks that just happen to be animals. There's never anything 
Um, there's very, I can't think off the top of my head. I may may have made a mistake here, but I'm pretty sure that you, you know, even like for instance, at one point a mouse drives a car, but it's a full size car. It's just a regular big car. He just has a very small steering wheel. It was always I was always trying to find the least amount of quirkiness in terms of uh, of the character. So you know, so elephants live in a regular house. You know, okay, yes, they're a bit big, and yeah, they do bang their head on the lights every now and then because they're very, very large. Um, but it just should feel more like a, a home environment that we recognize and not something outlandish and strange. Um, and, and so that you're just more invested in them, really, in, in their sort of day-to-day -day lives, that, that, that you can identify with them. Mm -hmm. So what was perhaps the biggest challenge that you, you had to do or in terms of like a particular sequence or, oh. you know? uh well there's there's the thing with a movie like this when you've never made one before is like pretty much everything seems like a challenge <laughs> um certainly we, we just talked about the story i think that's probably the biggest of all getting that working that balance right that's the biggest one but then technically there's all kinds of i mean just just i mean can you imagine the challenges the music department had on this they had over 80 songs to not only clear but then many of them remake um, some of them rearrange. I mean, it's been a huge, huge music job. I don't know if Universal have ever had a, 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 a single movie occupy this much bandwidth before in their department. I think they're all very relieved it's over now, I'm sure. But um, uh, And then there's all the technical things. It's really funny how some really big challenges in animation can actually be tiny. Like, just should the wool on Eddie the sheep's fur you know, why can't we get this certain move a certain way? You know, we fix all these things, but it's amazing how small things can be very big challenges, as well as, you know, obviously, if you're going to destroy a theater like we do at one point, there, there's a load of work involved in that. That's a huge amount of effort. But um, but it's funny how in animation, you, a tiny thing can also be a problem. Right, absolutely. You know, you talk about the music rights, and when I was watching the movie, especially in the uh, when they're auditioning all the different characters, I just thought of, Boy, the music rights clearances for this. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's like I just literally burned through the budget for the next year. But um, <laughs> it's, uh, it is amazing. They've been they've been so. That, here's the thing: we worked from the very first day with the music team, um, not just Mike and Rachel at Universal, but Harvey Mason Jr. and JoJo, who were producing all of this stuff, and. Um, uh, so we were all on board. We were all sort of like knew what we were doing, and so we had time to do it. I think often the big problem with a movie clearance is um, clearing move, uh, music is that you don't have much time or or enough money. But we had we had we had both in this case. Yeah. Well, uh, now that it's about to come out, any plans to return to the world of animation? I or thought you were going to say any plans to retire. I honestly, <laughs> <laughs> any plans to retire? Yes, I'm planning to lie down and um, uh, I'd, love, I'd love to have one more go at it at some point because I've only just had, I've only just got the hang of it, and I feel like man, it's such a uh, an exhilarating way of working. Um, honestly, when those pieces start to come together. And you get that animation working with that voice, or you get that lit shot back. It's like Christmas. I'm not exaggerating. It is really magical, and um, uh, and the fact you can do so much with an animated film is is very enticing. So love to have another go, but we'll see. We've just got to see what happens next. Mm -hmm. Well, Garth Jennings, thank you so much, and congratulations on your film. It was a pleasure talking with you. Likewise, thanks very much indeed. You're welcome. Have a great one. Cheers, Andrew. Bye. Bye. All right.